Good day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> So we're back here at our secret location outside of Cape Town. Um, there's no wind again today this morning. I'm sure it's going to pick up later, but uh, again, it's a case of making the most of, of the conditions right now. We've seen a lot of pigeons. We're going to get started very, very soon. I've got my impact out. Claudio's got his Brocock Commander, and then we've got a few other um, impacts and other interesting guns around here, which we're going to be testing out today. So let's get to it. Um, there's a lot to do. No more talking. Let's just start shooting. <laughs> Sixty-five meters, straight from the side, straight down. I don't usually go for headshots because birds tend to flap around a bit, but I decided on this occasion just to challenge myself a little bit. Um, and it paid off, so really happy with that. 55 meters, spot on. Our job today is to reduce the population of problem birds on a dairy farm, and you don't need to be an expert to figure out why. The storage sheds are absolutely dripping with pigeon excrement. There are nests in pretty much every corner, and it's not as easy to sort out a bird problem as it is to sort out a rat problem. This is a working dairy farm, so methods of pest control are limited to quiet PCP air guns, and farming practices unfortunately have provided unlimited food and shelter for the birds so their population is way higher than it would naturally be and it's not just pigeons sparrows have also made the rooftops their homes and as carriers of parasites and diseases they also need to be controlled as a matter of urgency that's where we come in I went for the off switch there, <laughs> um, kind of at the base of the neck by the crop spinal cord. I think there's a lot of nerves there. I think when you shoot that area, even if you miss the spine, I think the amount of signals that come from the nervous system to the brain actually put the bird into an instant coma and shut it down. So that's where I like to aim. Um, yeah, and I definitely did the job. <laughs> I know you guys have been asking for a greater variety of guns on my channel. And that's been hard for me because I really do love my impact. But we did have the Vulcan out on this trip. And you are also going to see Claudio's Brocock a little bit later. These guns did what they were designed to do, but they did struggle a bit at longer ranges. The pellets that they shoot have less than half the BC of the slugs. And they just don't have the power that the impacts have, unfortunately. I literally just saw the little bit of his head sticking out of the roof there. Uh, tried to go for it. I think I just nipped some feathers off or something. Cut out lines up here on a very clumsy looking pigeon and eventually after a few slips he sits still long enough for a shot. So feathers. Pretty much I nicked that one. It was on 95 meters. Don't know if I got all of it, but uh, yeah, gotta have a look at it. Nobody is oh. <laughs> Yeah, I thought nobody was recording that, but that was a 54 meter shot with a Vulcan straight in the neck, went down. <laughs> Gerard gets an opportunity from nice and close, and the 26 grain hollow point has no mercy on this dove. Game, set, and match. <laughs> There's a bit of wind for the shot, so I hold about half a mil off from 70 meters and the slug curls in perfectly. <laughs> 70 meters. If you look close here, you can see that I've dialed 270 
And it's as simple as that with these turrets. Um, these scope stickers are actually sold here in South Africa. I think here in Cape Town actually, there's a guy who um, makes them. The company's called scopestickers.com. I'll put a link down below, but you basically stick the range on your turrets at the marking where, where your ballistics calculator tells you that the range needs to be. And then you dial to it and take your shot. It's as simple as that. Obviously in the wind you need to hold or dial for wind as well. But right now there's no wind. So it's a very, very simple process. Perfect. Like <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we got both these guns out here. This is Rul's gun and this is my gun. Difference between these guns is bad. Obviously, like you can see the barrels. He's got a 600 barrel on this one. This gun has got a 700 barrel on it. Uh, this, this gun shoots out around about 930 frames, uh, feet per second. And this one does about 940. Uh, this gun is set up for the 26 grain slugs. And we've set that one up on the 23s. Both these guns shoot very really well. So it doesn't matter which one you take. You want to go a little bit more long range, I would prefer the longer barrel with a little bit more power and the heavier slugs. Um, scope wise, Matt's got his Night Force scope on there, always working perfectly. And then obviously I've got an Optisound on this side, they're doing the job quite well. So yeah, both these guns shooting extremely well, both these two days that we've been hunting so far. And uh, yeah, setup is just perfect, so very happy. You'll notice that Claudio hasn't been around up until now. He was just having a few minor problems with his gun but he eventually manages to sort it out and when he does, he's straight in the game. We spot a few pigeons nesting in the sheds and it's straight to work. Another one there? Yeah, to the right. Okay. To the right. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, I think I just nicked him. Okay. <laughs> so you have to do the job though. You don't need to get much of a sparrow with a 45 foot pound gun to put it down nicely, so happy with that. <laughs> okay, I shouldn't be laughing. Wow, okay. Perfect shot, held a little bit for the wind, nailed him exactly where I aimed. I love this gun. This isn't even my own gun, I just borrowed Rolf's gun. Just brought my own scope with. But I know that all impacts are created equal, so I pretty much trust um, that Rolf's gun is shooting as well as mine is, and it definitely is. It's shooting amazing, so. Really, really happy. Oh. Good stuff. Every now and again, we'll find that the birds just disappear and it's usually because of falcons or hawks. When the hawks are around, there's nothing we can do but just wait around. So let's talk gear for a moment. I'm really enjoying this um, sand sock. I, I got it from Utah Air Guns. It's really, really light for a sandbag. And it's got these little stretchy elastic bits over here. So I can just slide it over the end of my gun. I don't have to carry it in my left hand. I can use my left hand to range. And then if I need to rest the front of the gun on something, I can rest it on the sandbag so as not to damage the cylinder. And if I need to use it as a backrest, I can just slide it off and, and put it at the back here. So really glad I got it. It's light. It hardly weighs anything. So it's a nice addition. I actually bought this with my um, prize money from the uh, Rocky Mountain Egg Gun Challenge. So yeah, it's nice to 
be able to win something every now and again and use that money to actually pay for more shooting equipment to actually make me a better shooter. So really happy with that. Eventually the hawk flies off and slowly but surely the pigeons and sparrows start to show up again. There are even a few invasive starlings that show up and Claudio makes short work of this one. Roof lines up on a sparrow from about 20 meters and it sounds like a firecracker has just gone off. You might call it overkill but when it comes to pest control there's no such thing. It's either humane or it's inhumane and we prefer to err on the safe side. Yeah, you can even hear the ricochet going out the other side of that dove. Um, it's absolute power. It's a very beautiful but very hot day here in the Western Cape and we can see the mountains in the distance where we'll be doing a little bit of exploring later on in the day. But for now we're just trying to survive the heat. It's a, one of those lazy summer days and sometimes you just have to sit down and enjoy the sun and wait for the animals to come to you instead of walking around and getting all hot and burnt. <laughs> so yeah, nice to just relax sometimes even if it's on the gravel and I can hear the sparrows landing around me so when I hear that I can just sit up and blast them and then go back to sleep. <laughs> This shot doesn't quite connect as well as we would have liked and he flies off but with the tractor carrying the feed around it's like waving a bone in front of a dog. The birds inevitably keep coming back and we just keep getting new opportunities. Just um, Andre spotted a pigeon in a little broken hole in the roof, obviously nesting up there. And one thing I've been amazed at is you don't realize how, mu how much of, the, uh, of a problem these pigeons are until you actually go into the sheds and you see the, the defecation just all over the place and you realize that poo is all falling onto the stored um, cattle feed that keeps these dairy cows fed. And the de diseases that can be spread from that is quite horrendous. So. You know, you don't want the public to even know that, that that's what's going into the feed that goes into the cows that produces the milk that they drink. So it's our job to get rid of them. And that one was in the roof, exactly where you don't want them to be. And Andre spotted him, so I was able to take him out from, what, 50, what is it, 60 something? 62 meters. 62 meters. So very happy with that. This time has expired. Oh, just below. Just below. Right, so that's where we're going to call it an end to the day. We had an ex absolutely fantastic time here. Wind wasn't too bad, weather was amazing. We got a lot of pigeons, a few starlings, a lot of sparrows. Yeah. So it's been awesome. 
Um, yeah, really just grateful to be able to um, shoot, but more importantly, to spend time with friends. You know, these yeah. guys from Air Hunters that I made friends with just a few months ago, and then Claudio that I've known for a few years now. Much, much. It's really nice to have Claudio over. He's a fantastic person, really nice guy, really humble, and um, a good shot as well. So <laughs> it's been good to get to have have everyone come together in Cape Town here for a really good time. And we do have a lot of behind the scenes stuff, which I'm going to be putting on my vlog channel, which I'll link down below. But also maybe some extended uh, clips and stuff on my Patreon account, which I'll put down below, which I'll put up as unlisted videos because there's some clips that are going to be too graphic for YouTube that, um, well, for public YouTube that I'm going to have to <laughs> put separately. So if you guys want to go to Patreon and support me by, um, you know, support me on, pa on Patreon and, and watching those extended clips of some of the stuff you don't get to see normally on my channel that would also be fantastic but thank you so much for watching make sure to look out for claudio's channel and air hunters <laughs> and i'll see you next time okay cheers uh, um matt yeah uh, uh, hello guys i'm claudio flores from from chile i live in patagonia um, um in this year i work in day state and broco matt this new broco commander is g for you Oh, for using it in South Africa. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's perfect. It's my scope, yeah. my scope gun, and my rifle. Yeah. This rifle is for you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Brocock, for the gift. I really, really appreciate it. It's a great gun, and I'll definitely be using it in the future. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> See you. Nice.